Holy Spirit, kindle in us the fire of your love. Good morning, saints. And welcome to worship this morning as we're gathered together around God's word on as we celebrate the Pentecost of our Lord, in which before our Savior ascended into heaven, he made this promise to his church that he would send the Holy Spirit. And on this day, 50 days after Easter, he kept his promise and sent to his church the Holy Spirit to give them the ability to speak in different languages, to be able to proclaim God's word throughout the entire world, of which you and I are the beneficiaries of. For that good news of what our God has done has reached our ears in our own language. Let us then begin the worship of our risen and ascended Lord and Savior this morning with the singing of our first hymn. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Jesus says, 
It is from within, out of a person's heart, that evil thoughts come. Sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from inside and defile a person. So let's confess to God our sinful hearts with the words of King David long ago. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. The good news of the Bible is that God takes dead sinful hearts and makes them alive again. Here's how. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God so that no one can boast, not by works. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son, Jesus, to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And in this peace of forgiveness, Reflections will sing our hymn of praise. You may be seated.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, God and Lord, come to us this joyful day with your sevenfold gift of grace. Rekindle in our hearts the holy fire of your love, and that in a true and living faith we may tell abroad the glory of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Father, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from the prophet Ezekiel, in which Ezekiel is given a, a very vivid picture of a, a valley of dry bones, in which the Spirit of God then brings life, breathes life into them. And it's certainly a picture of what the Holy Spirit has done for each one of us in giving and bringing us, dead, dead people of God, to life, to faith in our living Lord and Savior. The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Come, breath, from the four winds and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. My people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live. And I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done it, declares the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for this morning will be, Psalm 104, will be sung by reflections. The congregation is invited to join after uh, reflections sings the refrain, so you'll be invited to the, join the refrain after each of the verses as well as the glory be to the Father. Psalm 104.
the Acts of the Apostles in chapter 2. Here is the account of what happened on the day of Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard the sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parinthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Mesopotamia and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, What does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews, and all you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. Hallelujah. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. The Gospel according to John chapter 15. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. And you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. I did not tell you this from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me. None of you asks me, where are you going? Rather, you are filled with grief because I have said these things. But very truly, I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because people do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father, where you can see me no longer. And about judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. You may be seated for our next hymn. Reflections will sing the first two stanzas of this hymn. You're invited to join in singing stanzas three and four.
Grace and peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's go back and look at the words that were read as the gospel lesson today from John 15 and 16. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, it is good for you that I go away? Try to imagine what that was like for the disciples who were in the upper room celebrating the Passover with their Savior. How can you possibly say that? We have been with you and we have dedicated our lives to following you and now you tell us that it's good for us that you go away? We can understand the emotion that they would have been feeling. When somebody that you know and love and trust and depend on tells you they're going away, it can leave an empty feeling in the pit of your stomach. But you, you can't go away. I need you. But even more than that, I wonder what was going on in the minds and the hearts of the disciples who still, to some degree, had mixed up understandings of what it meant that they confessed that he was who he said he was. You are the Son of God. You are the Messiah. We've been waiting for you. You still have work to do. Whether they were still thinking that Jesus was there to do something like what the prophet Ezekiel was talking about for the nation of Israel. They were feeling rather dead and defeated as a nation. They were under the rule of foreign oppressors. They had no real influence in the world but now you're here. Now you're here and all that's going to change, right? We're going to actually have a king over us who loves us and takes care of us. We're going to have a king who rules according to God's will and brings peace and joy and happiness to our land, right? But you can't possibly leave now because that hasn't happened for us. It is good for you that I go away? Do you ever find yourself wondering about the wisdom of that statement of Jesus? It's good for you that I'm not here for you to see? It's good that I'm not here for you to be able to speak to and to embrace? But Jesus, if you were only here, if you're only with me in my bedroom when I can't fall asleep because I'm afraid, things would be so much better. If you were only here to walk beside me when I had to have the difficult conversation and confrontation with that person in my life, if you were only here when I'm sitting in a hospital and the doctor comes in and tells me I have stage four cancer, if you were only here, it would be so much better, it would be so much easier. The disciples had much to learn about what Jesus' mission was all about. They had much to learn about why it was that he came into this world and why he had to depart from it. He tells them this, I have to go away so that the advocate will come. You've maybe heard that term translated different ways. Maybe you've heard counselor. Maybe you've even heard the word that comes from the original, the paraclete must come. That's a strange word, but it really describes what this advocate counselor was coming to do. That word really means somebody who comes alongside of you, who stands with you, to speak to you, to strengthen you, to inspire you, to comfort you, to guide you. He's going to come to you when I leave, but I must leave before that happens. I must remove myself from this existence in which you see me and you know me to be glorified, to sit at the right hand of God, to rule all things, for the good of my church, for your good too, disciples. And while I won't really be gone, I'll be present in a different way with you. 
and through the word that this counselor will speak to you and through the powerful work that he will do in his hearts, reminding you of who I am, reminding you of what I've done, and reminding you that I have not really left you at all. I must leave in this present existence so that he might come and do amazing and wonderful and multiplying things in your midst and in this world. I don't know if we completely understand that or if these two little analogies are helpful at all, but I think of two things that are ubiquitous in my life in this season of the year. One is sunflower seeds. They're in my house and in my kids' sports bags and being spit by fathers who are watching baseball games. David, Biggs, they're everywhere. They come from a sunflower. And I suppose somebody could see a beautiful sunflower and cut that flower down and take it into their house and put it into a vase and even enjoy and consume the sunflower seeds that are there. But once the flower wilts and those seeds are gone, then it's over for that flower. But what if you took that same flower and took each individual seed and planted them in your garden? And then you see hundreds of sunflowers coming up. And what if you took those seeds and planted them in your garden? You'd end up with a field of sunflowers and sunflower seeds for the good and the enjoyment of all. Is that kind of what Jesus is talking about here? I have done my work. I have completed my mission. I am going to be present with you and for you, but he needs to come to make this thing go. To take my word and to plant it into individual hearts and to multiply that in and through them until it reaches the ends of the earth. Here's another one. Dandelions. I know that some people like dandelions, and I know that they have some health benefits if you eat them and all that, but I can't stand them. And I especially hate it when they go from yellow to white mysteriously overnight, and then through the wind or through my lawnmower, they go everywhere. And I know that some of those are going to produce more dandelions. If a child picks a bouquet of dandelions for her mother, and puts them into a vase, maybe they will enjoy the color and the beauty of those dandelions, and then they will go away, never to be seen again, thank God. But those that stay, they produce in this uncontrollable way as the wind blows them and takes them from here to there and to the far reaches of our lawn. Jesus is saying the dandelion needs to go to his place And the Spirit's going to come and he's going to blow that seed everywhere by bringing it to different places, to the people who were there on Pentecost. That was a great crowd of people, Arabs, Cretans, Egyptians. But he says that's just the beginning. This word is going to go out through you and to other places of the earth. Like dandelion spores being blown in the wind, It's even reached a place called Waukesha, Wisconsin in the year 2024 in the English language so that we can hear it and know it and understand it. The promise of Jesus was a powerful one. I must go away and it is for your good. It is for the good of this world that I do because I am going to unleash the advocate. I am going to send forth the paraclete in all of his power and goodness to do some convincing and convicting. Did you hear the three parts of that work that Jesus talked about? He said, I'm going to send him so that he can convict the world of sin and righteousness and judgment. 
is going to come to hearts that are by nature proud and proud of themselves and think that the only righteousness that can be attained has to be attained from within. But he's going to come and he's going to convince those hearts of something other, otherworldly, something different, but something that is the absolute truth, which is this, we are sinners. And it is from within as we confess that sinful thoughts and sinful attitudes and sinful words and sinful actions come. And I'm even going to humble those as I tear down those strongholds of pride and those strongholds of self-righteousness, and I'm going to draw them to me with a beautiful and surprising truth. And the truth is this, that there is righteousness for you, there is righteousness for all in the person of Jesus, that what he did on that oh-so-confusing day of Good Friday, he did for you, disciples, he did for you, disciples, he did for our world, that he humbly and willingly put himself before the wrath of God as a propitiation to make peace between God and man by the erasing of sin and the reconciling of God to his creation. I'm going to convict you about righteousness, that there is a righteousness that is pleasing to God, a righteousness that God smiles at, a righteousness that he accepts and embraces and welcomes into his family, and it is for you, free for the taking in Jesus. That life that you saw him live, that you marveled at, which kept every jot and tittle of God's law perfectly, and not in a crummy or complaining way, but perfectly, as a beautiful child of God, so that he says, this is my son, look at him, I'm pleased with him because he's the righteous one. And then he robes you in that righteousness in your baptism, and he continues to clothe you in that righteousness every day of your life, the Holy Spirit does that. He has done that for you. He continues to do that for you so that those strongholds come down and they are replaced with something beautiful in Jesus. And I'm going to convict you and convince you regarding judgment. Make no mistake about it that the prince of this world who claims all authority, who claims power and dominion over you and the people of your world, that prince of darkness, he's condemned. He is a condemned and imposter king. He holds no power over you because you are protected by my name through my gospel. He can no longer accuse you. Oh, he tries to. He tries mightily to do it, to say you have no place with God and his kingdom, you have no worth in his sight. How could you possibly think that when you see yourself, and Jesus says, that one who says that, he's condemned. He can't accuse you for the sins that I've paid for. He can't say you're something that I've not declared you to be, which is a perfect, holy, innocent, righteous, dearly loved child of God. So use my word to shut his mouth. He's just a playground bully and your brother is here. And he has no power over your lives either. He has no power to say jump and to expect you to say how high. He has no power to come into your life and tell you you have no power over your demons and your addictions and your sins because Jesus has broken his power once and for all and he gives you his strength to say no to Satan and his lies and deceptions. But as true as that is for us, as true as that is for the Christian world, it remains that we live in an ugly world full of violence and lies. That there are still people who do not have what you and I have. That there are still people who live in the darkness and under the control of Satan and his lies. So we pray for the Holy Spirit to work in us and through us to blow the seed of his gospel far and wide 
to do it through a young man named Simeon who goes to the Philippines to share the gospel with the people there. Holy Spirit, be with him and give your word success to blow the graduates of our college and of our seminary who sends them far and wide to share the gospel in places where we cannot go. Come, Holy Spirit, and bless that work. And then he gives us each our little sunflower and our seeds in the places where others don't go because of your relationships, because of the place where God has put you. And he says, be about planting those seeds one at a time in the hearts of the people that need it and trust that I continue to do my work and be amazed, not perplexed, but amazed that it's good for you that your Savior has gone so that the Advocate can come and do his work powerfully in you and through you. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God that goes beyond all understanding will guard your hearts and your might and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. We make confession of the Christian faith today First of all, using the Apostles' Creed, the third article that speaks about the work of the Holy Spirit, and then responding with Martin Luther's, what does this mean? I'll speak the first words. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I believe that I cannot, by my own thinking or choosing, believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. In the same way he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and fully forgives all sins to me and all believers. On the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. Please be seated for prayer. Spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, Enlighten us with your gifts. Strengthen and keep us with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. Spirit of life, breathe life into into those dead in sin, the nations who do not know you, and the people who have not heard your voice. Let your word go forth to call them to life, hope, and strength. Spirit of wisdom, on Pentecost you descended on the apostles as tongues of fire. Fill us. All not with all knowledge and spiritual understanding. Spirit of grace, bless us, comfort and uphold our hearts. Give us strength to persevere in your word, call on you in prayer, and serve you with joy. Spirit of compassion, be the blessed advocate and comforter for those who are in need. Let each day bring them the word of your love, of your of of Bring them the word of your unfailing love. Strengthen their trust in you. Preserve their lives and bring them out of trouble. O Holy Spirit, by the brightness of your light, and you instruct the hearts of the faithful. Grant that by your holy work we may be truly wise and ever enjoy your holy comfort. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As the offerings of God's people are brought forward, we'll join together in singing our next hymn, Holy Spirit, Light Divine.
Holy Spirit, Spirit of truth and source of all spiritual gifts, stand by us in the weakness of our sinful nature. Grant us a right understanding of the truths that Jesus taught. Give us strength to endure with patience whatever afflictions God may send into our lives. Help us, intercede for us, and train us in the truth of your word. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our final hymn for this morning is Come, Holy Ghost, Creator Blessed. Very good morning to you, saints of God. Just uh, one announcement, and that is uh, this morning, uh, there'll be a presentation downstairs. There won't be any um, Mount Calvary kids, but there'll be a presentation downstairs. Hopefully all of you can make, that, uh, make for that presentation. We'll be talking about the work that we're doing right now in Philippines, so that'll start around 9.15 or 9.20 or so. And on our principal this morning, Mr. Brad Gurgle, he would just like to address you this morning and to give you maybe like a, a final update on some of the things that are going on in our school as we close out the school year. Oh, there we go. Morning, everybody. One last update before our school year ends this week. Hard to believe we're there, but here we are. So some of the things that have been going on in your school over the past month or so. At the beginning of May, we always celebrate um, MLC Day. That's always the first day of May. It's a day we set aside to thank God for the fact that we have a dedicated school to, that trains all of our pastors and teachers across our synod. And what an awesome blessing that is. This year we celebrated the special fact that we have seven people uh, either there graduating or currently uh, attending there uh, who are connected to our congregation in some way. Uh, that's Paul Frick, Kristen Uhr, Alicia Mengel, Noah Cook, John Wessendorf, Robert Reinke, and then our student teacher this year, Maddie Abel. Uh, a couple of them graduated yesterday and a couple of them received calls. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, Alicia Mengel got a call to Wisco yesterday to be the grade school band director there. And Maddie Abel got a call to Burnsville, Minnesota to be a fifth grade teacher and an athletic director. So God's blessings to both of them. So a couple of our classrooms took some photos to let them know that we were praying especially for them on that day. And then in some of our classrooms, we talked about what it means to be a pastor or teacher. 
and whether or not maybe the Lord has blessed some of our students with the ability to do that work for the next generation, and that was fun to see. We had our Arbor Day then, early in the month as well. Arbor Day is always a day where we spend the morning cleaning our campus, whether that be raking outside or uh, cleaning things inside or wiping down our boot trays, things like that, to put those away for the spring and the summer. Our students always do an awesome job of making our campus look cleaner. And then in the afternoon, we play some games. We head outside and then we do all kinds of games from uh, water relay where we have to use small cups to move one bucket of water across the parking lot as a team to the other side of the parking lot. The kids always enjoy that one. And relay races then as well, uh, sort of a mini track meet that we do for the students that are here uh, that aren't at the Wisco track meet, which is the same day as that. And so we have a good time with the students that day. And we even got Gus, the kindergarten lizard, and Mrs. Scheibe out in the nice sunshine that day. We had our STEM team compete in their annual MSOE competition, uh, and they did very, very well. The STEM competition, they always have to design like a Rube Goldberg machine. If you're not aware of what that is, that's a multi-step machine to do something that usually is pretty simple. This year's goal was to roll a dice, and so they had a machine that went through a whole bunch of different steps to roll a dice and got to present their machine to uh, various judges at MSOE. And though they didn't place in the, top, uh, in the top places, they did very, very well, and their machine worked, which is always uh, you know, something that, especially after you transport it, that you're worried about. But everything went smoothly that day, and they did very, very well in their presentations. We had our Teacher Appreciation Week, uh, May 6th through 10th of this month. And man, our school body, our families, our parents really go all out for that week. And our, it leaves our staff feeling very appreciated and, and, and thanked. So thank you so much to all who participated in that. As you can see, they had like a movie star theme for the teachers that week. We, got, we had a breakfast. We had a fancy sit-down dinner in the fellowship hall, uh, various treat bags, little awards at the end of the week that they gave to all the teachers. It was really, really fun and, and a very neat way for the teachers to, uh, on our staff to be thanked. Just some of the highlight photos from the week. And then just this past week, we had the fire department come by. They brought their little training house that they use to train kids on how to react in case of a fire. Uh, it's got real smoke and everything that can uh, come out of it, so they practice crawling in this mini house underneath the smoke and escaping out the back of the house, just various skills, so if that would ever happen, they'd know exactly what to do. So some of our classrooms had fun taking part in that. And then the end of the school year is always a time of year where all of our classrooms are taking end of the year field trips. This was our kindergarten class visiting a local farm and having a lot of fun learning about what farm life is like and how to take care of the animals and all of those things. We had our third through fifth grade classroom attend the math day at the Brewers game. So they got to enjoy a baseball game, Brewers won, and got to do a little math as well. A couple highlight pictures of that. And then just this past Thursday, we had our preschool graduation, one of my favorite events of the year. It's always so cute seeing them in their hats and how proud they are of the fact that they're moving on to kindergarten. This was a picture of our graduating fourth graders who are four, fourth graders, four year olds, there we go, who will be moving on to kindergarten for next year. Um, they sang the song, Kindergarten, Here We Come. So Mrs. Scheibe, they're on their way. And then just this last Friday, we had our track meet. We always take part in a yearly track meet against Christ the Lord in Brookfield. We had absolutely perfect weather. It was mid-70s, a little bit of a breeze, the sun was shining. It was a beautiful day, so a few highlight photos of some of our students in action in various runs and field events. A great time was had by all, and more than a couple of us got a little bit sunburned. Okay, a couple invites for the last week of school. Our last day is this Thursday. We always have a closing chapel right before the end of the day. We dismiss at noon. So if you're available, 1120 is our closing chapel, always an encouraging chapel, an uplifting chapel, a lot of excitement as that's it for the year, and then off the students go for the summer. So 1120 if you happen to be available. Otherwise, that evening, this Thursday evening at 630, is our graduation and closing service. All of those eighth graders up on the screen there will be graduating from Mount Calvary this year. So to wish them God's blessings and to thank God for all the blessings of the year, we've got a special service this Thursday, 6.30, you are definitely welcome to come, whether you have kids in school or not. We'd love to have you be part of that. And then you've probably heard by now, but this is Mrs. Sarah Horn. She has accepted our call to teach grade four at Mount Calvary. Uh, we're very thankful for that and the fact that that means we've got a full staff ready to go for next year. In a time of teacher shortage, that is definitely not something to take for granted. So we feel very blessed to have her coming our way. You'll first see her sometime around July 
as she picks up her work here on July 1st. And with that in mind, uh, we've got the Pingle Family Farewell coming up. It's a little ways off yet, but I wanted to share this so you could mark it in your calendar. Sunday, June 30th, after the late service, we'll have a special meal to thank the Pingles for all that they did, all the many years that they've served here. Uh, uh, we want to give them a thanks and a send-off um, before they head out a few days later uh, to Virginia. So mark that down on your calendars. It'll be down in the fellowship hall after our late service that day. Uh, we'd love to have you be part of that as well. And then one final uh, reminder, one final invitation. This is our last week of Mount Calvary Kids, an adult Bible class. Then we have a week off. And then over the summer this year, we're going to try something new. We're going to do something called Family Bible Hour, where we're going to invite entire families and individuals too. Uh, you can make, make a pretend family downstairs if you don't have your full family here. And we're going to meet downstairs each Sunday, and we're going to talk about the miracles of Jesus. We're going to share the stories in a visual way that children can learn from, and also sprinkle in facts about history and historical connections and things like that, that adults can hopefully learn some things too. We can study God's Word as an entire family, talk about it together, play fun games, eat donuts and have, have a good time between services while we learn God's word. We'd love to have all of you be part of that, from the youngest to the oldest. Again, whether your family is here or not, um, you, there'll be small groups of Mount Calvary members that can sit together, even if your family's not here, and we'll study God's word together as a family and encourage one another all summer long. We hope you can be part of that between services starting June 2nd and running throughout the summer. That's all I have for today. Thank you for your uh, attention. God's blessings on the rest of your week. Okay, so yeah, there is Mount Calvary Kids today. I was thinking like this is Memorial Day weekend, but I'm a week ahead. So uh, there is there, there's Mount Calvary Kids today, and then downstairs we'll have the presentation on the work we're doing in the Philippines. One other uh, just maybe call update is that Christian U Kristen Ewer, who many of you know, she also received an assignment at a one-year assignment because she is actually getting married here in a couple of weeks right here at Mount Calvary. She received a one-year call to St. John's Landon in Sussex uh, for uh, upper grades, departmentalized, so that'll be a one-year assignment for her. God's blessings to you, people of God, as you continue to rejoice in the fact that your God has sent to you his spirit to bring you to faith, to be able to confess that Jesus is your Lord and Savior. Have a wonderful week.
we do have a few growing up too. That's good. Practice for family Bible hour. All right, girls and guys. Maybe we have a couple more rolling in yet. Maybe not. That's okay. It's our last one of the year. I figured today's crowd might be a little more sparse as we get closer to summer and people are taking trips and things like that. All right, grab a seat. Let's get started. Last Mount Calvary Kids of the Year. It's been so good to have many of you here just about every week. I, I see some faces out there that I think have been, been here pretty consistently. Um, this summer, we'll talk more about Family Bible Hour at the end, but we'll have a week off, and then I encourage you to talk to your families about coming back for Family Bible Hour throughout the summer. We'll talk about what that means in a second. Okay, before we jump in to our story today and our fun games and, and snacks and things, I want you to think about a question, and that question is this. What's the most like bizarre, crazy, unbelievable thing that you've ever seen? If I asked you that question, what would you say? Give you a second to think about it. Something bizarre, crazy, unexpected. What would you say? Mason, what, what came to your mind when I said that? Okay. Scoring like 100 points in an NBA game. Yeah, that's pretty amazing, bizarre, crazy. Good. And, that, and some players have scored 80, 90. I think 100 is the record, isn't it? Yeah. That's a lot of points from one player. Pretty crazy. Anybody else have something that popped in their mind when I said that? Something bizarre, crazy, unbelievable? No one else has seen any crazy things? <laughs> oh, one more, Mason? Go ahead. One more time. A big snake? Okay. What were you going to say, Jacob? <laughs> say that last part again. A tree that was on fire. Wow, that's pretty crazy. That would be a pretty wacky bizarre. Oh, we do have one more. Very cool. That's a good example. Yeah, go ahead. Now we got some more people thinking of things. Someone who's eight feet tall. Okay. Are you talking about like that picture of that guy we looked at a few weeks ago? Yeah, that really tall, like world record holder, tall guy. <coughs> yeah, he was pretty tall. <coughs> okay, we got a few more people thinking now. Go ahead. I used to live in Florida, and we saw some crocodiles. Yeah, those are pretty bizarre alligators. Pretty bizarre to see them out in the wild. All right, one more. Good. A house on fire. Ooh, yeah, that's pretty bizarre and crazy, too. So here's my story, and it'll connect in with our story for today. This is not an actual picture that I took, I wish. No, but I, I was in my last year of college at Martin Luther College, and I was driving. It was at the end of summer, I was driving to school for school to start in the fall, and it was pretty nasty out. The whole time I was driving, there were thunderstorms and lightning and all kinds of things with hard rain. And then I got to New Ulm, that's where Martin Luther College is, and I was filling up at Casey's Gas Station. So if you ever go to New Ulm, it's right outside New Ulm, this, this little gas station. And it was getting worse and worse, and I was putting gas in my car, and I looked behind me, and there was a city off in that direction a number of miles, and I saw something kind of like that a tornado cloud starting to descend from the, the clouds. Is it playing downstairs? Okay. Thank you. 
said, wait for me. You're going to know when the Holy Spirit comes. I want you to wait for that moment. And then after that moment, after God strengthens you through the Holy Spirit, you're going to go out into the world and spread the good news about Jesus in this world. Right? That was Jesus' great commission. So the disciples waited. And they waited and they waited. And one day when they were in a room worshiping together, this is why it connects to my tornado story, there was the sound of a violent rushing wind in the house. Can you imagine that? Uh, maybe you've been in a spoke different languages. So what that allowed the disciples to do is they went outside the home that they were staying in and they began to preach about Jesus in all of these different languages. And of course, all the people that were there were like, oh my goodness, this is so bizarre. I'm hearing my own language. So my bad, I can clearly tell it isn't from my country. And many people began to gather around the disciples. Uh, many began to listen. There were some, though, in the crowd that made fun of the disciples. In fact, some of them said, wow, these guys sound kind of crazy. I wonder if they've had too much to drink or something. And they began to mock the disciples. And so Peter stood up, kind of as the spokesman of the disciples, said, of course, that nobody's had too much to drink. It's only 9 in the morning after all. This is something really powerful and miraculous happening by the true God and the Holy Spirit. And then he went on to preach a sermon to the whole crowd. And I picture the other disciples probably translating what Peter was saying to little groups of people all around him in all those different languages. Peter said, I'm here to tell you about Jesus. Savior of the world who never sinned and never had done anything wrong, you guys seized him and put him to death on the cross. Now you have to imagine, that's probably kind of a scary thing to say to a crowd of people. That's not, that's not something people want to probably hear, right? But the Holy Spirit was working that day on their hearts. And when people heard that, that this Jesus was the Savior, and that many of them who had been in Jerusalem at the time maybe played a role in shouting for him to be crucified and, and were part of the reason because of their sin, ultimately, that the Savior had to die. Fancy way of saying that is they were told they weren't going to have any part of his body. The, the law, God's law, was reminding them that they were sinful human beings and that they had sinned and not, and not seeing Jesus as their Savior like they should have. So they asked the disciples and Peter, what should we do? If, if we put this Savior to death and that's God's Son, as you're saying, what hope is there for us if that's what we did? God must save us. And Peter said, no, no, no. Repent and be baptized. Put your faith in Jesus. That's the whole reason he came. He Speaking a different 
Holy Spirit was definitely at work in the hearts of many people. And then the church began to grow. Picture this. All of these people in that city of Jerusalem for that festival then go back to their homes. Some of them from other countries and faraway places. Guess what they probably did when they got home? What do you think they did? God's word began to 